Okay, and welcome back to my tutorial series on modeling a clock in Maya. Um, for this one, I'm mostly going to be focusing on texturing. But before I do that, I'm going to be hiding this piece of glass, which is hiding our clock's faceplate. So I'm going to go to Layers, Create Empty Layer, name it Glass, just, just like I've been doing for the past couple of tutorials and adding it to that layer, unchecking visibility. So now I just have the faceplate and I'm going to sign it with a unique Lambert material. So on the rendering shelf, click the Lambert button. This will assign a Lambert to the selected material. Set the color to white and that's pretty much it for this scene. I will now save it as part six and off to Adobe Photoshop. Now here's a look at the finished textures. Texture actually. Um, it has a bit of a rim running around it just like the real clock. There are the numbers and this piece of text right here. We're, g we're going to be recreating all of that and to start off we'll, we will be creating a blank document. Go to File, New, the name of the document should be called Texture. This is completely own discretion. I'm just calling it Texture. Width and height need to be 2048 by 2048. This is in a unit of pixels. The resolution really isn't important to us because we don't intend to be printing this anytime soon, so just 72 will be just fine. Color depth will be 8-bit and mode RGB. Now click OK and we've created a new document. So let's start off with creating the rim, probably the more complex piece to this texture. And the reason it's so complex is because of all the lines we are going to have to create. That's virtually impossible to hand draw all of those lines in, Ma in Adobe Photoshop. So we're going to be using Maya to draw them for us. So to do that we're going to be using a UV snapshot. So go back to Maya and create an empty scene. Now create a cylinder and look down upon it from the top view. As you can see Maya is really good at drawing lines so basically we're going to take these lines and send them to Adobe Photoshop. Right now we don't have the right number of lines. In our final texture we have one line for each second so that is 60 lines. So in Maya, we will select our cylinder, go to the Poly Cylinder 1 tab, and set the subdivisions around the axis to 60. Now that that's done, we are going to UV map it. The reason we need to UV map it is the way we're going to be exporting the lines from Maya is through a UV snapshot. So go to Create, Planar Mapping, set the project from to Y and click project. Now that that's done we will go back to object mode, select our cylinder and now we're going to go to window UV texture editor. Okay here we will create our snapshot. Go to polygons UV snapshot. To start off give the file a name and save it in some location. Just click the browse button and name save. The next thing you need to do is give the file the same resolution as our Adobe Photoshop document which is 2048 by 2048. Make sure keep aspect ratio is checked. The color value really isn't important and make very certain that anti-aliasing isn't checked. If it is checked, it will actually make the lines look worse. That's not normally the case with anti-aliasing, but in this case it will. The image format needs to be set to ping or TIFF. Really any file format that saves transparency or a mask can be used, but we'll be using a ping. Just make sure you don't use a file format like bitmap or JPEG. They can't save a mask. So now click OK. This will export your file and before we go back to Adobe Photoshop we want to make one more UV snapshot. 
we're going to go back to our cylinder with it still selected and in the attributes editor set the subdivisions axis to 12 as the subdivisions around the axis and we're going to create another UV snapshot give the file a unique name different from the last one we created and all the rest of the options stay the same now the reason we just created the second UV snapshot is these dark lines need to be separate and we will be using that UV snapshot to create those dark lines so to our new document I'm going to start off by actually excuse me opening the file we just saved the one with uh, 60 lines we need to now import this file with all the lines they might be a little hard to see so you may need to zoom in so we want to import that file into our new document now we can click and drag or in my case I'm going to go to layer duplicate and set the destination document to texture now just click OK the reason we went with that option is because if we were to drag and drop the layers the positioning of the layers may change and this layer has to set has to stay in the center of the document so we can close that that down now and go to our texture document now if we look at the rim in our finished copy it's offset in a bit from the edges so we need to do the same we will be doing that by scaling the texture so we go to file transform scale make sure layer one is still selected and we're going to press this chain button this maintains the aspect ratio so it will maintain a perfect circle as we scale it and the scale property I'm using is 94 percent that means it will be scaled 94 percent down and press the check to confirm that scale operation and the next thing I want to do is make these lines black so I'm going to right click on layer one go to blending options I will check color overlay and stroke the color overlay will change the color to whatever color I want and the stroke will increase the weight or the width of the lines so we can see them better we will set the color overlay to black and we will set the stroke size to 2 we'll leave all of this at the default and the color will be changed to black and press OK so the next thing we need to do is make the inside of this white so we create the rim effect to do that I'm going to go to the brush tool now the reason I'm going to the brush tool is not because I'm going to try and paint inside a perfect circle is because I'm just going to use a very large brush in my case 2000 pixels with a hard edge 100 percent and just to create a dot a very large dot mind you but before I do that I actually want to create a new layer so I just went to layer new layer okay so now I want to create a very large dot just click and release we don't want to drag it or make the circle oblong so now that we have this circle on its own unique layer we're going to go to edit free transform and the reason we're doing this is the center point of this circle is more than likely off by even just the slightest amount the reason for this is because there's really no way of eyeballing 100 percent the center of the scene in Adobe Photoshop so my preferred way to find the center of the scene for a circle anyway is to scale all of the corners using the free transform tool to make sure they all touch the corners of the square so if all the corners of the circle are touching the square well then the circle must be in dead center and we complete the operation now we need to reduce its size a bit so we will be going back to scale once again pressing this and setting the width to 98% now we are starting to see that rim effect to make it look right we are going to create another blending option so right click blending options 
we want to check color overlay and stroke once again. On the color overlay, set the color to black, I mean, excuse me, white. And on the stroke tab, we will leave the size at 3, and we'll also change the color to black. So that's it for that blending options, and press OK. So now, let's work on those dark lines. We're going to go to File, Open, and grab that dark line file we last exported. Once again, the lines are very thin, so it might be hard to see. And duplicate them into the texture document. Close this. And now we're going to start working with the lines here. To begin with, we're going to drag layer 3 underneath layer 2. The next thing I'm going to do is right-click on layer 3 and define some more blending options. We've been doing that a lot recently. So I'm going to go to Color, Overlay, and Stroke. For the Color Overlay, we are going to be coloring it black. And as for the Stroke, we will also be coloring it black. But we will set the width or size to 11. This will create that heavy-weighted line. Now then, we're almost done. Except for the fact that this line protrudes outside of our rim. To fix that, we're going to group all of the layers and then create a mask on that group. So, select all the layers. That's layer 1, 2, and 3, not the background layer. Then go to Layer, Group Layers. Now that that's done, display the group and uncheck visibility for layer 3. Now we're going to go to Adobe Photoshop's magic wand tool. You'll find it on the left toolbar. And make sure its options are checked for continuous and sample all layers. Then simply click on one of the corners. It selected all of the white border text, I mean pixels. We're going to use that for the mask. So select group 1, just click on it in the layers window over here. Then go to Layer, Layer Mask, Hide Selection. It will hide all the pixels that are underneath of that selection. So I check visibility on Layer 3 again. And now they remain inside the bounds of our rim. So we'll end this tutorial here and begin working on the text in the next part.